When I was a kid, I always loved going to the set to watch my father, Vincent Minnelli, direct. What I remember is he would either sit quietly in his chair, or else he was a crazy person. He was like the czar. <laughs> he was a perfectionist. He so cared about how things looked. No detail was ever too small to matter. I got rhythm. I got music. I got my gal who could ask for anything more. My father came to MGM in 1940 with the reputation of a successful New York stage director and set designer. He had a special contract with the studio which gave him a year to watch, to learn everything about film, at full salary, mind you. One of the things that really struck him was the restriction of the camera movement. It could only move horizontally or vertically. He thought, why can't the camera move in all directions, like a person or another character in the film? So my father invented the crab dolly which is kind of based on the principle of a wheelchair. It can go anywhere you want it to go. Therefore, opening up new possibilities, not only for himself, but for every other filmmaker. The studio liked what they saw from my father in that first year. And right away, they asked him at the end of that first year, what film do you want to make? It's time. And he told them, an all-black musical. Well, they nearly fainted. I mean, you know, they weren't sure that an all-black musical would sell at that point with a white audience. And blacks were beginning to resent the way they were represented in film. In the end, he made the characters so stylish and the environment so exciting that everybody thought it was just wonderful. Cabin in the Sky. The next film my father really wanted to make was Meet Me in St. Louis. Now, my father went to the studio boss, Louis B. Mayer, and, and told him that's what he wanted to do. And Mr. Mayer said, what's it about? And Daddy said, nothing. <laughs> Mr. Mayor said, well, I mean, what happens? And Daddy said, well, the father gets a job in New York. Louis B. Mayer said, oh, so the family moves to New York. My father said, no. Mayor said, oh, well, then they want to go to New York, but they don't. My father said, no. Mr. Mayor said, then what happens? My father said, it's one year in the life of a family. The story was very much like his own early years growing up in Chicago. And he made a film that I think is probably one of the most cherished, lovable, telling American films ever. And it starts out with his family making ketchup. Best ketchup we ever made, Katie. My father had these wonderful ideas. But the key thing is, is he knew how to get them from his head to the screen. That's what directing is all about. Well, certainly it's dark in here with the lights off. You can really see it in the way my father uses my mom, Judy Garland, in this movie. They met on this film. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this film. <laughs> see, she didn't want to even make this film because she was 22 and she didn't want to play teenagers anymore. But he took her, the way he photographed her, the way he saw her, his vision of her, took her literally from teenager to lovely young woman. It was magical for my mother, and a giant hit for MGM. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart strings. From the moment I saw him, I fell. My father's vision as a filmmaker was there from the start. That visual genius and that command of the craft carried him through over 30 incredible films. Now, he was the only director at Metro that was allowed to direct all different kinds of pictures. And his style always came through. It wasn't just a movie. It wasn't MGM. It was my dad, the director, Vincent Minelli. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Liza Minelli. <laughs>